So the Unity third person controller starter asset has been taking off lately and there are no good tutorials on how to make them work across the network using Mirror. So I decided to put this together real quick. Strap in and let's get started. So here I am in a brand new project and you can see here I already have the three dependencies that I need. So just to walk through them really quickly, the first one you need is Mirror, obviously for your networking needs. I can hit open in Unity and I've already done this so I'm not going to do this again. Uh, I can do the same thing with third person character controller, which is Unity's built in character controller that we will be using today. And the last thing that I need is, is known as Parallel Sync, which is a tool that I can use to test my multiplayer games without actually building my game. And how I can do this is I can go to releases, tap on the latest release and download the Unity package. And once that's downloaded, I can go to assets, import package, custom package, and I can select Parallel Sync. I've already done that, which is why I have everything here. There is one thing to note here, which is when you import the third person character controller, Unity prompts you and tells you that you're going to be using the new input system to which you can say yes. The next thing I'm going to do is create a plane and I'm going to scale this out to seven and seven so that we have a frame of reference here to work with. Next, I'm going to head into starter assets, third person controller, prefabs, and drag in the player armature prefab into the scene. Now I'm going to create a new folder in my assets directory and I'm going to call this prefabs. And what I want to do is I want to drag this player armature here into my prefab and mark it as an original prefab. I can get rid of the packed game object here. And now in my prefab, I'm going to attach the following mirror components. So follow along. And within my network animator, I'm going to drag my animator, tick client authority, and open my network transform and tick client authority here as well. I also want to mention here that ticking client authority is definitely a trade off. Client versus server authority is a big topic and will probably be covered some other time, maybe in a different video. But as of now, we'll keep this enabled. So the next thing I want to do is head over into starter assets, open third person controller, and within prefabs, drag in my main camera and drag in player follow camera. And I can get rid of the old main camera, rename this to my main camera. And within my player follow camera, I want to create a new tag. And I've already created here, it's called player follow camera. But the way you can do it is clicking on add tag. And you can see here that you can create a tag here. And if I go back, I can tag this as my player follow camera. I'll show you why I'm doing this a little later. Now I'm going to create a new game object and I'm going to call this network manager. Here I'm going to attach Nimero's network manager component and also network manager HUD. And the important thing here is in my player prefab, I'm going to assign the player prefab that we had just created. I'm now going to create a new folder called scripts. And within here, I'm going to create a new script called player movement. Now within the script, I'm going to get rid of everything and I'm actually going to copy from starter assets, third person controller scripts. And within this, I'm going to copy all of this and paste it here. And the only change I'm going to make is to the actual class name. And I'm going to call this player movement. We're going to change a couple of things here, which is why I'm making a copy of the controller itself. And I'm going to show you what those changes are now. So back in my editor, I'm going to open the player prefab, go to add component, and I'm going to add player movement, the script that we just created. And within here in Cinemachine camera target, I'm going to drag in player camera root because this is what Cinemachine looks at. And if you see here that the camera root game object is somewhere here on top, which means that the camera is going to be pointing at your neck or your chest level. So back in my script, I'm going to do three things. First, I'm going to import mirror. Second, I'm going to change this to in inherit a network behavior. And third, below awake, I'm going to add this piece of code. This is going to be called just like start, but only on the client. And if you're a host, then the host for the local player object, right? So this is where we're going to do our camera assigning. You can see here, this is why we tagged our cam player follow camera with this, uh, this tag that we've written here. We get the cinema machine virtual camera component and we set its follow to this game objects child, which is if I show you in the editor, once this loads, 
here in prefabs in the armature you have player camera root so this is what it's going to set the camera to follow so before we move on so i'm just going to open my prefab here and within the player movement script i'm going to set the ground layers to default so this is so that the player can jump move around etc and now we're going to actually going to hit play and we're going to see what happens so you can see here that i'm actually in the game and i can move around and everything works as intended there is one final thing we have to do to get this to work correctly mirror doesn't play too well with the new player input especially in this case with the new third person controller so what you actually have to do is to disable this player input on the prefab itself the player prefab now back in the script i'm going to add this piece of code so this is on start authority similar to start again but only called for objects that the client does have authority over here i'm getting the disabled player input component and i'm enabling it i'll be giving a more detailed description on why this has to happen in the description below and the final step is within update we need to add this piece of code which is if i'm not the local player just return out of update because i don't want to handle movement on the player prefabs that are not my own that are not controlled by the client so we're actually good to test now if i click on parallel sync and go to my clones manager you can hit add new clone if you don't have a clone yet but i already have a clone of my project so i'm going to click on open in new editor and this is going to take quite a while so back in my main editor i'm going to hit play and i'm going to tap host so i connect as a host which serves as both a server and a client and in my clone i'm going to hit play here as well and i'm going to tap client only here so you can see here that it spawns me as a client and i'm able to move around and this syncs perfectly with the other client as well and i'm able to move around here and if i tap here you can see that everything is working as intended so that about does it for the video guys thank you so much for tuning in if you like this video please consider dropping a like and subscribing to my channel as well that will help out tremendously i'll see you in the next one